Hey guys, good morning. You made it. Put your hands together for yourself, y'all. Good morning. Happy Sunday. We're glad that you guys are here. Um, some of you may be in the room because you saw some crazy people in green shirts yesterday. Um, and that was us. Hey. <laughs> my name is Randy. Um, like my husband Billy said, we have the privilege of leading Gospel Church here uh, in the Dunkirk movieplex, y'all. Every time I get up here, I just I have to make sure that I reiterate how crazy it is that we're actually having church here, guys. <laughs> like I can't tell you, we visited years ago. I think it was like. Like maybe uh, three or four years ago now at this point. And like there was nobody in the parking lot when we drove by back then. And there was like nobody really when we came to watch a movie. Uh, they didn't open till like six o'clock or something. It was crazy. And so the fact that it's alive and well today is a miracle because God had this business holding tight so that there could be a church in here one day. Amen. Um, welcome if it is your first time. Just so you know, here at Gospel, you don't have to believe anything to belong here. Um, we, we believe that when we present the good news of Jesus and the love of Jesus, uh, he does the work. So if you're in the room and you don't know how to feel yet, you don't know if you agree with everything, it's okay. You have a space here. You're loved right where you're at. But guess what? We know that Jesus is going to meet you there, so it's all good. We'll be patient, okay? Um, but we are pumped that, we, that I have the privilege to be up here this morning. Um, I always honor my husband intentionally because uh, I think it takes a really secure male leader to be able to have his wife use her voice. Um, and not just once in a while or in a small group or off to the side, but he makes space for, um, for, for me to grow as an individual. And he makes space for the Lord and the Holy Spirit to use me and the Holy Spirit to use the women of this church. And so it takes a very secure individual to be able to do that. And so I just want to honor him. And he's not in the room anymore, but that don't mean you don't honor them because they're not in the room. Uh, if this is your first time, we are in the middle of a series called Road Trip Music. Road Trip Music. Was anybody here last week for Billy's opening to Road Trip Music? Wasn't it really awesome? Isn't that so cool? It is a study on the Psalms of Ascent, which are basically the songs that were sung when they were en route somewhere. Uh, the reason that we're teaching on these and really trying to gather them up all together, there are 15 of them, is because we really believe that we should all have a song on our heart along the journey. Amen. That when you're enduring, when you're pressing through, or maybe you're skipping through the meadow and everything is great in your life, that there should still be a song on our hearts. Um, and today I get to open to you, open with you Psalm 124, verses 1 through 8. Psalm 124, verses 1 through 8. I'm just going to jump right in with y'all because this is a really good one. Billy uh, showed me some of the ones he had been praying over, and we were trying to pick who was going to be where and when I was going to speak, and I called dibs on this one, so, you know, it's a good one, okay? Uh, when you're ready, say ready. If you're not, say wait. Oh, well, y'all know where Psalm 124 is right there, like in Encyclopedia. All right, this here reads the word of the Lord. Um, it says, if the Lord had not been by our side... Let's say, Israel, if the Lord had not been on our side. When people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive. When their anger flared against us, the flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging water would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord who, had not, who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare, the snare of has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Can you read verse eight with me? It says, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Can you say that one more time? Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather and to worship you, God, to sing praises to you, Father. We thank you that you are the God who has never lost a battle, that you, if we have, you have not won, God, you are not done fighting on our behalf. So as we um, enter into this space, beginning to hear what you have to say, would you soften the hearts of your people? Would you prepare them for the seed that's going to go in the ground, God, that they would never, ever, ever be the same after today by the power of of your son, Jesus. So thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, like we said, we are in a series called Road Trip Music. Um, Billy and I are big music people, clearly, you know, 
we're in church and the whole series is about music. We kind of like it. You know, uh, we've always been those people. The first, I don't know if you know this, but maybe Billy shared it last week, but the first phone conversation Billy and I had, I'm sure you guys can think back to one of those first phone conversations that you had with your significant other that was like six hours long and you couldn't get off the phone with them. Anybody ever had that? Maybe a previous significant, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Miss Cora Ann. She's raising her hand, three years old right there. Hey, me. <laughs> um, uh, were those conversations, Billy and I were on the phone for like four hours and we're talking about like music, soul child, and we're talking about Frank Sinatra and also a little bit of Backstreet Boys, don't, don't hate me, okay? Bye, bye, bye. And there was all these songs that we were, you know, connecting on and it was all this music. Sorry, maybe I, I quoted the wrong one. And um, yeah, so I, I just, I think it's interesting though that music has something to do with a lot of our experiences. Think about your wedding your wedding song and every time that song comes on it gives you like this feeling and like you're all excited because this is your song or like maybe a song in a movie that was at like a really sad scene can I tell you mine the sad one it's been a long day without you my friend you guys remember that from Fast and the Furious Oh, I hear that song and I'm just enveloped. I just can't, I can't handle it. There's all these songs that brings all the emotions. But I know most of you in the room, you have like your song. Like your one song. Like I'm going to tell you one of mine. Don't, don't, I'm not, no heresy y'all. I have a plethora of worship songs. I could tell you, I could sing you every note and play you every chord. But there's this one song and it's not a worship song, so don't get mad. But it, the bass line comes in and it goes, bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Hey, hey you know what I'm saying? So you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so for me, that's my song. I remember, I know you guys are probably going to be really upset, but I remember hearing it for the first time in a movie called Guardians of the Galaxy. I know it's been out way before then, okay. Yes, that song came on, and I, for some reason, I had, like, all these serotonin levels, and I'm, like, all happy, and I, that bass line just rolls in, and I just thought it was, like, the most incredible song. So... You know, we add it to our playlist, of course, and we're listening to it all the time, randomly. And um, Billy knows how to get me cleaning, because he turns the song on, and I'm in a good mood, and then we're all of a sudden, the house is clean. But songs make us do something, right? And when I, when, we, when I open the scripture at Psalm 124, this is a song they're singing. And this is not just any song. This is not just another psalm that's been written and tossed up about how one day there was a bad day. This is a song because they were delivered. This was at a point in time where David and his people had been attacked by like multiple different nations at the same time. And I don't know if you've ever been there where it maybe seemed like a lot of things were going wrong all at once. It wasn't like one thing or two things. It was like giant countries in this specific context that had come up against them and technically they should not have made it out. Technically, according to everything that's happening, statistics, numbers, people against people, power against power, they shouldn't have made it out. And, and there's this truth that, that David wants to echo a few times. And he said, if the Lord had not been by our side. And then he calls his people of Israel and he says, let's all say that. If the Lord had not been by my side. And he repeats himself a few times intentionally. He really wants to make sure that he's not the only one addressing the goodness, faithfulness, sovereignty, and provision of the Lord. He requires his people to then echo what he's saying. And he puts out this idea of repeat. Y'all ever had a song on repeat? That was my bum, 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 yeah. It was over and over. Like, I, you could not get me sick of this song. I just hit repeat, and it was like, that was what I was going to hear over and over again. And that's what, what David is trying to get this on their heart. I mean, you can think about it. Some of y'all later, probably around 1.30, are going to hear yourself singing, hey, hey. Because guess what? I may, I, I, you sang along with me. I sang it a few times. And what did it do? It got kind of stuck in your head. And that's, that's kind of the idea of repeat. And today's message, I want to bring to you the thought of being stuck on repeat. What happens when we're stuck on repeat? I, I for me, when I listen to that song over and over, it's probably like five days after the last time I've heard it and I'm still singing, hey, hey, you know what I mean? Because something happens with repetition. 
Something happens when we repeat over and over again. When I play that song over and over again, when I prepare on a Sunday, those songs are going to be playing. I have no choice but to let that echo in my head for days, weeks, and sometimes months later because I heard it a few times in a row. And I, I think in this psalm, not only what's happening in physical context, but he's really requiring that his people begin to repeat truth. And in order to really get some good music on in the playlist, I don't know if you guys have been there, but Billy and I will build like a playlist. We will um, add a few songs in and, you know, how many know like one bad song? Throw the whole vibe off? Yes. Okay. Well, I, I, I've been there before where I've kind of put the wrong song on repeat. And, and the first thing I really want to bring to you more this morning, and it, I guess pose the question, is what have you had on repeat lately? For some of us, you have had the song that encourages you and you jump up in the morning and it's incredible and it's powerful. But then there's other times where maybe that song that's been on repeat has been stuck in your head for too long and you haven't listened to it in a while and it hasn't been around. But because that one season of your life, you let it repeat over and over again and now it's just echoing. What David is doing is he's saying, let's repeat the positive part. That if it had not been for the Lord, we wouldn't be here today. He could hyper-focus, right, on the fact that there was anybody in front of him at all. You know, David, a man after God's own heart, the one that, that wrote all of these, you know, hundreds of psalms, and he's a psalmist, and he's a king, and he defeated this, and he did that. Why did, God, why did you even send an enemy to me? And I think sometimes we focus, and I guess for this sake, we play on repeat the fact that we even had a battle instead of the fact that he brought us through the battle. We repeat, and I'll just give you a few examples. In my personal life, um, I grew up with, you know, in church and ministry, and my parents did ministry when we were younger, and I was, you know, always, this has always been my environment. Since I was probably seven or eight years old, uh, we've always been in churches. We've always, we, I've known one church my whole life, incredible, Destiny Church. I know you're watching online. Um, and I've had one church my whole life. But towards the end of my parents' ministry life, it got really crazy. And I, I remember getting through my parents' divorce and a lot of turmoil and dark stuff and insecurity rooted itself in me. And, and probably four or five years ago, I would have still been complaining about the fact that my parents got divorced instead of the fact that I have a healthy marriage today. I could have repeated over and over and placed on repeat the fact that my dad disappeared. No, he's not going to love me. Who will ever love me? I can't believe my dad didn't love me. I can't believe my dad, which he does. We have an incredible relationship now if you're watching on my dad. Uh, over and over. I could say, he's, I'm insecure. I'm insecure. My dad left. My dad left. I'm insecure. I'm insecure. My dad left. My dad left. Or I could say, my relationship is restored. The faithfulness of God is provided. Even though I endured before, rejoicing comes in the morning. What do you have on repeat? What has caught itself up in your mind over and over and you just kind of said it and you forgot about it? You had a set it and forget it moment with your song. And I really just want to come to you and bring this challenging thought that there is a difference between being stuck on repeat because it's so good and a part of your song just being a broken record. Now, 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 let me talk you through this part. It's okay to talk through your pain. It's okay to talk through the traumas and experiences of your life and walk to healing. Where you and I get stuck is when we turn into a broken record. And we replay this one portion of the song instead of listening to the faithfulness of God in its entirety. And, and I really want to challenge you in this morning with that idea Look, in the Psalms, there are other songs written and truths and poetry written through the Psalms where they are honest. There's a Psalm where David and his people, they drink the water and the water was poison and he writes about it. And he tells about how detrimental it was and what happened when these waters got bad. But at the end of that Psalm, he ensures to bring it back around, but God brought us through anyway. 
And that happens through the Psalms where you see a moment of truth, but it always gets back to the reality that God is still good. And that we still, for some reason, have breath in our lungs today. And I think what happens to you and I, why we never get to the next level, the next step, the next call that God has on you, the open door you're waiting for, is because maybe a certain part of your song has just become a broken record. And he, he turned his back on me. And I deal with this. And I, this was my past. And this is what happened. And this is what happened. And this is what happened. And yes, it very well did happen. But the goodness of God has a future for you that is filled with hope. And if we get stuck on this portion of the song, you ever had a record on repeat? Um, broken records stuck for too long some of you that, that you know you played records when you were younger you have them now I have a record player y'all don't don't okay okay but what happens to the record is it starts to scratch and then once it's dug its way through there it goes to the next track and it scratches that part and next thing you know the entire record needs to be disposed because it's been damaged from being stuck at the same And I don't want to see any of your next song, your next track, the next worship and exaltation that you have to the Lord go to waste because we got stuck on one part of the story. What if they would have just laid back the people of Israel and David and said, fine, take me. Someone's going to come against me. They're always going to come against me. We're always going to have another thing to fight. There's always going to be, yes. You know, Paul says, count it all joy, though. Count it all joy when we face troubles and trials, when we have moments where there's something in front of us. But if you can change your song and get the right one on repeat, that if it had not been for the Lord, we wouldn't be here today. If it had not been for the faithfulness of God, I think, I think David was getting ahead of the narrative. Because I think a lot of people would have been upset of Israel that there was another opposition, that there was another thing to fight. And he said, no, no, let's praise the Lord because if it had not been for him. And then he ends with such a powerful verse. And he says, because our help, it doesn't come from us. It doesn't come from another win or another situation. It comes from him. It's time that we really start to sing a new song. I want to challenge you with that this morning, that there's a new song ready. The song we sang this morning, um, it, it's cool for it to be a song, right? But it came directly from a psalm. You know, he put a new song in my mouth and a crown upon my head. He gave. Yeah, you guys like that song. It's kind of fun, huh? Life forevermore. Yes. Well, let me tell you, Psalm 43 is where it was written from. If you ever wonder, 100% of the songs that we sing all come and we can find back at scripture. If you ever wonder, we don't just sing random songs that make us feel good or we'll give you goosebumps or play anything. These are directly from the word of God. And Psalms 43 says, he has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear it and will trust the Lord. Our song has more effect on the people around us than I think we think. When you're willing to sing a new song, when you're willing to let him put the song that you're going to sing in your mouth, that changes something. There are nine mentions in scripture where, where it inclines us, calls us to, or directs us to sing a new song. To sing something new to the Lord. And, and I, I hope you don't think it's just changing up the worship set. It's not just like switching out beautiful name for another one. It's what praise will be on your lips. Will it be the, what he's placed in your mouth, the scripture of life? Will, it, will that be your song? There are 50 direct commands to sing to him, directly telling us to worship. And, and I'm sorry to break it to you. I had one of these moments where I realized that the Bible is not made up of commandments or directions that fit my personality type or my preference or what I like or who's in the room. They're solely to to glorify God, to bring us closer to him, to draw us into truth, to build us up in love and in faith, to give us endurance. These things that we follow are not just to get something off another checklist, but it's to come into a lifestyle with Jesus. 
how you worship, what you worship, it, it will determine the soundtrack of your life. If at the end of life, if for just as an example, if we get to heaven and we put a soundtrack in of Brianna's life, what will be the songs that play? What was on repeat? I want you to put my soundtrack in and hear, though weeping comes in the night, joy comes in the morning. I want you to hear that do not let them despise you for you were young, that I reminded myself that over and over again. I want people to hear when they play the soundtrack of my life that God is good and he is good to me and I trust him. What do people hear when they hear, what will they hear when your soundtrack is on? What praises will come from your lips? See, the song that I have to sing over my house sometimes in a practical level is, Lord, my daughter's going to get some rest tonight. Amen. And I have to sing that thing over and over. My rest comes from you, Lord. Joy comes in the morning, even though she ain't slept all night. Like, I have to even sing over my house sometimes. And I don't know where the wrong song has been on repeat in your life. Maybe it's been in your marriage, maybe your relationships, in the center of your grief, in the middle of your confusion. What has been on repeat? The interesting thing about music as it's been given to us, it has been given to us from God. He created all strings, all sounds, all harps and every living creature, every, the fact that we even have air in our lungs to send sound out in a diaphragm that shapes the sound that exits our body has been created by God. But the most interesting part about music is that we only play A to G. A, I'm not even gonna give you a music theory lesson. We need Tommy for that, so we'll give you that another time. But it's A to G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And don't get me wrong, there's sharps and there's minors and all that stuff. But it's A to G we've been given, okay? Now, if I give Emily free reign, go make a song however you wanna make it, you have A to G to make a song. And I, you know, take A to G and I make whatever song I wanna make. What's crazy is that she can make whatever sound she would like. And I can make whatever sound I would like. And we have all been given the same A to G, Genesis to Revelation. But what will your sound be like with your A to G? The, the thing is, 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 is I, I can come in as a music manager and have somebody under me that I, I say, I'm going to produce your music and I just need you to write everything, bring it all together, all that stuff like that. But you decide what the sound is. I just make sure it gets out there. And I have to ask you this morning, what sound are you going to make with your same A to G, your Genesis to Revelation? If we're all reading the same scripture, we're all going to get something different. But what sound will you create with your different? What will you repeat? David and the Israelites decided to repeat if it had not been for the Lord. Though we endured, though we had to face giants we never thought we'd face, though we had to see that, what was it going to be that they were going to keep on repeat? And it's interesting that he says, if it had not been for the Lord, you know, we wouldn't be here. And then he invites Israel to join in on his song. And he says, let all of Israel sing. And he brings in other collaborators to this song. And I have to ask you, the, the second question I have for you, is, the first one, obviously, is what have you had on repeat? But the second one is who's been collaborating in your playlist? Let me, let me explain that. So... You know, Billy, before, he used to make me mixtapes. So cute, huh? <laughs> he used to make little, you know, first they started as tape players, and then we realized we had nowhere to play them. And so then he made me a CD, and at the time my car had a CD player, and it was really cute, and he, I would put it in, and he had all these songs. Young love, young love, I need, I need, I got my young love. No? No? Come on, y'all. <laughs> You're like, no, not at all. Come on, Randy. And there was all these beautiful songs that were so sweet, and I loved them, and it was so cute. But then we got another car, and the CD player wouldn't play anymore, and so we decided to switch all of our mixtapes to uh, Spotify. And what happens on Spotify is you can create a playlist, and then you can add a collaborator. I can send it to somebody, and there's a difference. I can send somebody a playlist to just listen to it, 
but I can also send somebody a playlist to add to it. Now, they can add a few songs in there, and they can put a few different, you know, things. But the thing with Billy and I is I always make sure, I ask him, okay, what's the vibe, though? What's the vibe of this playlist? Like, are we trying to slow dance in the rain? Or are we trying to, like, stomp our feet to, like, like, imagine, imagine going to all of me loves all of me. It's like, what is happening? And I have to make sure when we're going to add to the playlist and we're collaborating that the sound that we're going for is going to match. Because one wrong song could throw off the whole thing. Do you want to know an example? Of course you do. Of course you want to laugh at what happened to us. In the middle of a prayer service, five years ago, we have a playlist going. And um, Billy added a song in, um, on accident to the prayer playlist, playlist. So we're all in the middle. We are standing. Everybody's on holy ground. We are standing. And then you know what came in? Boom, 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 boom. In the middle of prayer. There are 300 people in the room. And everybody went, oh. And I think some of the the ones that had just crossed over had said, do we vibe to this? He's inviting you. Come and get your love. Come and get your love. That's how we had to play it off. But there's something happens in, in the sound when it's not all on the same page. And there's a few things to this. But first I have to say, maybe you've been inviting collaborators to your playlist and they've been adding songs that don't take you in the direction of where you might need to go. You've been letting people add a song to your life and you've maybe accidentally left it on repeat and you're wondering, how did this end up in here? How did these lies become what I'm echoing? How did this song become something I'm listening to now? Because it really does, it will affect 1 Corinthians 15.33. It says, don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. Look, I'd like to just, you know, dance around to some of these other popular songs, but the wrong song on the right playlist makes it the wrong playlist. And I think we allow people to add music to our life, and then it just gets stuck in there. And, and we, so one bad thing happens, right, with someone that you've invited into your life, and instead of confronting it, you kind of just let it play on repeat. And you just start cycling over and you hear that lie over and over again. And you hear something that's not true over and over again. And then next thing you know, you don't even realize that it's like not matching where you're going. Like enough bad songs or wrong songs on the playlist will make you start to think that those all belong there. Even though they don't. Like don't be deceived. Those, that, that sound, those lies on repeat will corrupt the way you see you, the way you see God, the way you see his purpose and his plan for your life. Like, I can't tell you the amount of times I have faced a mountain and someone tried to walk up to me and say, wow, really? You think God's going to do something? Oh, well, remember last time it didn't happen the way you wanted it to? Well, do you really think that something, you were going to make it? I don't know if we're going to make it, guys. Like, look around. You know, people, people get nervous that summer's here and the attendance goes around, right? You know what Billy and I have to do? Make sure that that song doesn't get added to our playlist. Because this church ain't going nowhere, y'all. I'm just telling you. It's not going nowhere. I don't care what dip comes, what high comes. Because the song I have in my heart is, the, is that the Lord is faithful to complete what he begun. So when someone comes and tries to add to our playlist, well, look at the numbers. Well, look at this. Well, look at that. You're not allowed on my playlist. That song's not allowed in this space. Because I have truth on repeat. And anything that don't match the vibe, got to go outside the vibe. Okay? We have to start really asking ourselves who has been collaborating. We need to have wise collaborators, guys. The Bible talks multiple times about having wise counselors, having wise counsel around us that are going to add songs into your playlist 
that match where you're going, that align with the truth of scripture. I'm not telling you to run away from everybody else because you can share your playlist without letting somebody collaborate in your playlist. You can let somebody hear what's going on in your life. You can let them watch. They can stay friends on Facebook. That's fine. But guess what? You're not going to have access to add things to my life. Can I tell you, can I share with you a few of the collaborators you need in your life? Five of these, you can write these down. I know we love all of our practical steps that um, Pastor Billy makes sure he's gives. So I got some, I got some for y'all too, okay? Okay, number five is collab, is, uh, here, or here's five collaborators need your life. I'm sorry. Uh, the first one we need is an in, someone who's going to encourage you. We need a, you need a collaborator in your life that will encourage you. Someone, someone that's going to remind you of the truth along the way, and they're going to root for you. They don't, these are the people, they got the faith gifts. They don't care what it looks like. They're like, the Lord is with you. You can do this. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Hey, you got this. I know you're tired. I know you've been going, but you can do this. You're going to have rest on the other side. This is just a season. Someone that's going to constantly encourage you. And if you write these down, if you have somebody that does that, feel free to write next to it, their name. And if you don't, maybe at the end, evaluate. And look at how many empty spots might need to be filled. Okay? I know it stings a little, but I'm just here to challenge y'all. Okay? Yes? Amen? Okay, we need somebody to encourage us. So you have to remind us the truth. Somebody that's always rooting for us. You need somebody, and this one's going to be hard, to correct you. I know I always come up here and I tell you and I talk about having leaders, having somebody that can tell you no, go, and slow. Like, and I will always say this. Because you and I were not designed to do this life alone. Doesn't matter how well you think you've, you've done to this point. For some reason, you're sitting in the room, and that means we need one another. And so we really, really have to have somebody that corrects us, that, that really challenges you to do something outside of your comfort zone. Challenges you to do something outside of the realm of what you always do and you've always done. There, there's some sort of faith that activates when you step outside of yourself. Um, I can't tell you the kind of faith that has been built up in Billy and I because we had somebody that challenged us and corrected us. They corrected us when we were ready to come over here and move, and my pastor said, let's, let's, let's wait a year, and if you still want to move in a year, you better be ready to go. Like, you better be ready to have your boots on and right on the ground and go serve people. And he made sure we waited 12 months and he said, because this is what happens. We get a high of a feeling and we want to do something and then it dies down and then things disappear and passions disappear. And so he said, if you're called to it, even if you're not passionate for it in 12 months, you're still going to not be able to shake it. He was right. Well, yeah, we couldn't shake it. We couldn't sleep at night. But he challenged us in that. And he corrected us that just because you want to do something right now doesn't mean right now is the time to do it. And he really, really stretched and pulled something. Um, the third thing you need, the third uh, collaborator you need in your life is someone to cover you. Someone to cover you. Yes, you, do, you know, have you guys ever heard that scripture? It says love covers a multitude of sins. You know what people forget to tell you is they confront what's underneath that covering. We don't just cover it like with a rug and then walk away from it. You have somebody that you trust enough to cover you from what you've been doing, what's going on. You're ready to expose it to somebody, and they're covering you. But once the crowd is gone, they're turning around, and they're confronting you. we got to have somebody that, yes, covers what you're going through in life, whether that's good or bad. Maybe you're in a season where you're coming into big celebration, but you're not ready to share with anybody. you got somebody that covers you. That says, it's okay, like, I'll celebrate you, I'll love you, I'll be right here with you, but I'll make sure you're still covered. But they also confront what's underneath. And too often, we just want somebody to cover up what we got going on, but not anybody to confront what's underneath there. And can I tell you that um, all of these five collaborators, Jesus encompasses all of them, but that doesn't mean he doesn't want physical people in front of us doing this with us. He doesn't, that doesn't mean that because we have Jesus that, oh, everybody else, I don't have to listen or hear anybody. You ever heard somebody say, Jesus is my authority? Jesus is the only person I listen to? Incredible. But sometimes Jesus sends through somebody and tells you something that you need to hear. So we can't just pick and choose. Oh, I like when Jesus sends somebody, sends something to me that's encouraging, but I don't, I don't want to take when Jesus sends somebody that maybe confronts some things. 
And Jesus wants to confront your pain, but can I tell you this? He also wants to confront your petty. He wants to confront your pain, but he also wants to confront the petty. What you post on Facebook, how you respond, what you share, uh, what parts of each situation you maybe hyper-focus on. When you've had an incredible moment happen, but for some reason you're able to just hyper-focus on the petty, small things that don't really matter, an eternity scape. I hate to be that, that person that is that up front, but I can't tell you the amount of times I have missed out on a miracle because I focused on the petty. I missed out on the, the, the move of God because I was focused on the way that someone looked at me when I walked in the room. Maybe you've trusted him with your pain. Maybe he's healing your wounds, but for some reason you're just stuck in the cycle of petty. Somebody that covers you is going to cover that petty, but they're going to say, okay, let's refocus on eternity. Let's refocus on what actually matters. Let's not, let's not let people steal what God has moved on, what doors he's opened. That's what petty does. It takes away the glory from God and puts it back on you that what you saw, what you noticed, what you think, and it just it steals the moment that God is moving. And I don't tell you that because I see it in any of you. I tell you because I saw it in myself. That there were moments that I got caught up on the small little things that didn't matter. But because I had collaborators around me to tell me that's not what we're focused on. My pastor's wife, she used to tell me, we're not there right now. You know, I would try to complain about something, right? You know, we would have to throw these really big conferences and... You know, all, I would order and design all of our clothing and put it together in the room. And we'd have this big old wonderful, you know, merch shop and all this stuff. And then I would be annoyed because, like, one of the ways that the shirts was designed, it didn't come in the exact same way and all this stuff like that. And she would look at me and go, we're not there right now. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> like, oh, we're not there right now. The fact that we were even able to pay for this is good enough. She changed the song that was on repeat. She took a song off of my playlist that didn't belong there and put the one that did belong there on. Can I tell you that, that when you have people that encourage you, correct you, cover you, your playlist starts to sound different? Your song starts to sound different? The last two that you need, you need somebody to inspire you. You need to see a life, their life, their passions, their disciplines, and it makes you want to do something. When Billy and I started collaborating on playlists, it made me want to start listening to new music and new artists that I had never heard of. It made me want to do something. His taste in music inspired me. The sound that he was radiating made me want to listen more. He was, it was an inspiring person. And the last thing you need is you need somebody to pray for you. Like consistently. Like not somebody that Holy Ghosts you up and down and all that stuff. That's incredible. That's amazing that someone is on behalf, ready to meet with you right there. But you need somebody that's going to pray for you when you don't even know that you need praying for. You need someone that's going to reach out to you and pray over you and encourage you when, like, it's even good. Not just when it's a reaction to when it's bad. We have people praying for us. We have Mary, Miss Mary here. She, pray, she has a picture on her wall of us and prays for us. The first time that I went to their home, I was beside myself because I've seen a lot of people pray but I've never seen anybody pray like this woman and and she had pictures of all these people that she'd been praying for and laying hands on and and I I didn't realize it at the time but how desperately I would need a Miss Mary you need somebody that's praying for you, your husband, your wife, your children, your businesses, your career, what God's doing in your life, what you're telling people and what you're not telling people, what you're showing people. What You need somebody that's going to speak on your behalf. And like I said, Jesus encompasses all five of those, but he's so good that he places those five things in different individuals and he'll send them to you. Because I don't want bad music on my playlist anymore, guys. I don't want the wrong sound coming in and out. And can I tell you that it's not, I'm not just telling you, you need a collaborator. Because Esther had Mordecai. And you know what he told her? Perhaps this is the time you've been made for. 
When she was afraid to go into the courts of the king, he grabbed her and told her, perhaps this is the moment. Maybe this is what you've been waiting for. Esther, she had Mordecai, and Timothy had Paul, and Joshua had Moses, and the disciples had Jesus. We all need people. Men, I love you so much. And I have seen it over and over where we just, you just don't think you need anybody. But then it gets really lonely. And I've seen it. I've seen it in my dad's life, in my grandpa's life. I saw it in seasons of Billy's life where loneliness sets in because if you ask for help, you're weak. Can I tell you from the other side, like as us women, and I hope we can speak on your behalf, you look like 10 times stronger in our eyes. You look like Baywatch running down the beach when you say, I need help. When you lift your hands in worship, the women are like, wow, wow, look at that. You know how Billy got me? I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I used to lead worship every Sunday on the stage, and I didn't know Billy, but I always saw Four rows back, the stage wasn't this close. Some guy like this in the row. He couldn't move like this because there are people around me. He would like, you know, do this thing. And I said, that guy fears the Lord. That guy, he wants Jesus. That man, oh, he'll, he'll ask for help. He'll tell me when he's wrong. He'll apologize. Men, if you're single in the room and you want a woman, please just raise your hands and say you need some help because you go from like a five to a ten in every one of our... Girls, can we just tell them? Are you a lion? Men, like, I, I, I wish we could, I could explain this better. But like, I don't care how long you've not been in the gym for. You say you need help? You want to apologize? Oh, you drop the word therapy? Will you marry me? Look, all that to say, when we get people around us, everything looks better. Life gets color again. Brightness comes into the room. Purpose starts to uproot itself and remind us it's there. There have been collaborators in other people's life through the ages. You can probably think of people that have led you and have loved you. You know, it's just interesting because Esther and Mordecai, she fulfilled her purpose. Because Timothy had Paul. And he, you know what he repeated into Timothy's ears? Don't let them despise you. Don't let them despise you. Don't let them despise you because you're young. You can keep going. You can keep doing this. When all the elders of the churches at the time were like, he's too young. Why would they pick him? Paul said, don't let them despise you. You know, Moses tells Joshua in the middle of their transition of power, he says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong. And you know what Jesus told his disciples? He reminded them, far greater things will you do than I have. He put on repeat collaborators play on repeat the truth they push you to your destiny and they cause you to to hear something you've never heard before listen to things you've never you would have never listened to before and you know the only difference the biggest difference between my kind of song and songs like that is number three these ones can't get overplayed see i used to love come and get your love like on repeat for like two hours a day for a few days. And then after a few days, it kind of just got overplayed. But the difference between these re repetitions of perhaps you've been made for this, don't let them despise you, be strong and courageous, far greater things you will do, is those ones can't be overplayed. And I think the biggest lie we've believed as Christians is that God gets tired of hearing the same song. I think we get tired of singing the same song. I don't think he gets tired of hearing it. 
He doesn't get tired of us singing, he loves us, oh, how he loves. I think we get tired of singing that song. He doesn't get tired of hearing, what a beautiful name it is. Or I can't believe how good the Lord is. It's not him that gets tired of hearing it. It's us. It's us that get tired of praying the same prayer. It's us that get tired of asking for the same thing over and over again. But friends, Galatians 6 says, don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't grow weary in letting that song play over and over again. You know what's interesting is once that the, a good song is stuck in your head, without even thinking, it comes to your mind. Without even intentionally opening that playlist and putting the song on again, it comes to your head again. It comes over you over and over again. And isn't that what we want for the word of scripture? That when we hear it, it just, we can't stop. But when you face something, you go, joy is going to come in the morning. Joy is going to come in the morning. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Oh, I have a future filled. Don't you want that to be what echoes? And I think what happens with the good news is we convince ourselves it's been overplayed. We convince ourselves that we're past that. I already know all the lyrics and I know the baseline intro by memory and so I can move on to the next song. But when something's stuck on repeat, that means it's so good you can't stop playing it. I want want to have the good news of Jesus stuck on repeat that I just can't stop playing it that I just can't get it out of my mind that he loves me and he died for me and he's here with me and he's near to the brokenhearted and he never leaves me or forsakes me. I want that so stuck that when I want to have a reaction to something else, I I begin to sing this. I I have to bring to you the scripture that I came upon and, and I think really what I want to challenge you guys with as I close is maybe you've kind of let the good news, the truth, some of those prayers you prayed for a long time, you kind of just let them get overplayed and you just stop playing them. You took them out of your playlist. You stopped listening to that truth and you kind of trashed that song as a whole. I, when I read Revelations 2 a few weeks ago, this was the, the moment I had when I realized the overplaying. It says, but I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. That you, us, at one point, we let the song get overplayed. As if it could. We let the truth start to be something that we would take on and off of our playlist. If it was good, the song was allowed to be on. And if it was bad, we just changed it to another one. And if everything was right and went well in life, then sure, let's sing the song. You are good, good. But when you're not good, I'm not going to sing that, God. Or, you know, when, when you have a victory, you've been praying for months and months and months, and you ask God for something, and you lift your hands, and you're like, Lord, if you do this, I will blank. And he does it. And we don't blank. And I think because we forget that had it not been for the Lord. I pray that that never gets overplayed. I pray that we will let that truth marinate, that we remind ourselves that this is not a song we move past. This is not one of those bum, 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 that you get tired of hearing. 
that it's not a reaction. Leaving the, the shout of goodness on your playlist is not a reaction to good things happening. It's a lifestyle you've adopted. And I don't want that to be held against me. That I forsook my first love. That I walked away from the first thing that gave me life again. That gave you hope in the darkest of times. That gave you purpose in the middle of drifting. That gave you light at the, at the darkest season of life. I never want to forsake that. And I really want to challenge this idea because what David did was he said, we're going to repeat this until everybody starts singing it. Everybody of Israel, join in. Nope, you're not there. Join in. And you know what he ends his psalm with? Because our help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. When you start to realize where your help comes from, you're not afraid to invite collaborators. You're not afraid to keep that same repetition in your mind. You're not afraid of any of that. You're, you're not going to get overwhelmed with the song being overplayed. You're not going to, when you know where your help comes from, overplaying that song is the first thing you want to hear in the morning and the last thing you want to hear at night. And I don't know who's in the room, and maybe you've received a bunch of stuff, but I want to speak to the person that let this song get overplayed. And like Revelation said, has walked away from their first love. Maybe your first love, you were in adoration with worshiping to Jesus. You couldn't get enough of worship music. You couldn't get enough of your instrument. You couldn't get enough of learning how to sing and harmonize. You couldn't get enough, and now that passion has disappeared. Maybe you're somebody who has before in the past, you have loved the church and its people. You were ready to fight on its behalf. You knew you were called. But today, eh, it's a little overplayed. Because some of the wrong songs get led into your playlist. Or maybe it's none of the extra stuff. It's just Jesus. And we almost let him just become a little overplayed the truth that you have grace that he's here to meet with you that he wants to see strongholds broken he wants to see dysfunctional relationships disappear from your life he wants to work on the heart of the heart of you but that truth has just been overplayed can we make a call for the people that need to come back to the heart of worship again because revelation 2 he, he's telling us, this is what I'm going to hold against you. And I don't mean to, to cause fear. I mean to bring truth. And if truth scares you a little bit, then it's probably truth. This is what I hold against you. That you've lost your first love. And that we've made it about other things. And that we've let other voices in. And he wants to draw us back this morning. For some of you, yesterday was a drawing back moment for you. Serving, being a part of something bigger than yourself, letting your song get changed out for a new one. Some of you got pulled in a little bit closer. Back to the heart. Back to why we do it, not because there's an audience or somebody cheering you on or because they say good job, but because it's a lifestyle that he's calling you into. And so if you would, if you'll just close your eyes. And we're going to have a moment because I think that the Lord wants to bring us back to the heart of worship. And remind us that it's not a personality type and it's not a response to a good situation. It's because we adore the Savior who died and rose for us. We lift our hands. I don't lift my hands because it makes me comfortable. I don't lift my hands because you like it or dislike it. I lift my hands because the living God gave me breath today. I don't jump around at the beginning of a song because it's fun. I jump around because the redeemed of the Lord has said so.
Because after six failed marriages in my lineage of family, I have a healthy marriage. I shout for that. Because after seven years of infertility, the goodness of God has brought me a miracle child. I don't care what it looks like, what it sounds like, or whose personality it fits. Because when you see that if it had not been for the Lord, you can't help but raise your hands. Some of you shouldn't be in the room today. Some of you shouldn't be married anymore today. Some of you shouldn't have relationships with your children or the job you have. And we lift our hands in response to that. If it had not been for the Lord. If, if that's you today, I want to invite the prayer team forward and ushers if you'll kind of just prepare. If that's you and you feel like you've kind of let the good news of Jesus, the basic truths, just get overplayed in your life and you need to come back to the heart of worship because you don't want that held against you. If that's you, don't be afraid, don't be nervous. Will you just wave your hand at me? Okay. I know there's a few, a few more of us. Yep. Will you, will you just stand? We're going to worship. All of us, let's stand together right here at the end of this. But if that's you and, and, and you feel like you're ready to come back into alignment, to take those songs on your playlist off, to invite new collaborators in and let this be a new song on your heart, I, I just want you to make your way to the front. I want you to make your way to the front. And we're going to pray for you. We're going to come into agreement. Come on, if you're, if you're in the room and you maybe, you're not responding to this, would you just stretch your hands towards the front? Because God is going to move on behalf of his children. God, we come back to the heart of your presence. Father, we thank you that you're bringing us back. You're recentering us, God. You're refocusing us. Thank you that your truths cannot be overplayed, God. That no matter how many times we hear of the goodness of God, it'll stay as truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you, yes, God. It's all about you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, you, Jesus. And I'm coming back to bring us back, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for bringing us back to the heart of worship. Thank you for reminding us what we let repeat in our mind matters. What we let echo will determine how we see situations, how we see you, how we encounter you, how we interact with you, how we love you, and how we love your people. This week, may we have an encounter where we say, if it had not been for the Lord. May we have a moment where we remove some of those songs that don't fit. May we have a vulnerable moment where we invite somebody in this week. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, um, we're going we're gonna to continue. We have a... We're doing generosity next, but if we're going to have the prayer team up here um, when we dismiss, and if you're 
if, you, if that was you and you maybe didn't feel like you could walk up here, made you a little bit nervous, because um, I know there's a few people in the room. There's a few more of you, and, and so it's okay. We're not going to call you out, but we're going to have our team up here. And don't leave today walking away from your first love. Don't let it be something that's held against you this week. Because you don't have to walk out and regret that you didn't respond because there's going to be a team waiting for you, ready to love you. Amen? Amen. Hey, um, if, you did, if you are finished being prayed for, you feel free to go back to your seats, and then the prayer team will wait for you. And um, come on, why don't we give it up, guys? <laughs> check, check, check. Uh, I just want to let you know every time that Randy brings a word, um, it's never just like, you know, press play and she just does it. She prays for you. She puts time in the study of God's word. She asks her friends. She asks me. She asks her pastor. Um, every time that my wife gets up to speak, it's not just, oh, so the women have a chance. No, there is an authority on my wife's life. I just want to let you know what you heard was fruit of what she puts in every single day. And I think we ought to just honor the woman of God one more time. Hey, as she said, uh, on your way out, hang on, hang on, on your way out, um, you can leave your offering, your tithe with our, our uh, usher team, and we appreciate all that you're doing. We are so excited about the summertime. And uh, we wanted to kind of give you a heads up, be in prayer for us. Uh, this week, we are meeting with our board. We have a potential uh, property that we're going to start pursuing this week. And yeah, and I, I throw this out there. I will share as many details as I can once we, you know, meet with our board. To, uh, we're meeting tomorrow with our board, and then we'll meet with our lenders, and we'll start going through all that stuff. So next Sunday, I hope to have some updates on what this looks like, where it looks like. But you know, we've looked around at some stuff, um, but this just seems like something that I feel like we can actually do. And uh, that's all I can really say. I want you to pray though that God would provide favor with the current owner. But also pray that God would provide finances. We're believing that we don't even need to lend, loan money. That money's just going to show up for us to get into a property. And I jumped up. Randy, you know I was coming up. Nope. <laughs> but I just felt like you, the people, need to know what God's doing. And as soon as we have details and we're legit, we can show you and tell you what's happening. But I just want you to know, that just don't get comfy in those chairs. Because this is just the beginning of what God is doing in our church. Amen. 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 So come on, let's pray for your giving and we'll dismiss. Father, we love you. Thank you for that word. Lord, we, uh, we believe that you've sent the right people to collaborate on our playlist. And as Randy taught, what we believe about you never gets old. So, so today as a church, we say we're ready for what's next. Lord, we put our hope in you. We put our faith, not in finances, not in the opportunities, not in the coding and all that stuff. We put our hope and faith in you today. Would you continue to bless this church? Would you continue to open doors in this church? We love you. Would you stretch your hands for the blessing? I just feel appropriate to bless you. May the Lord bless you today. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May this week your appointments and meetings be led of the Holy Spirit. We pray over your mind that your thoughts would be clear and intact. We pray over your mouth that you would speak the right responses to things. We pray a blessing over you and your family. In the name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. We love you, church. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you this week for groups and then back here at the movie plex.